Hey there, and welcome back. I think we have a cool video in the works here tonight. I can't wait to bring it to you. It has to do with the topic of extreme long range shooting and what does it take to get into it. So if you're like me, you're into shooting, you're into long range shooting, and now there are a ton of really affordable rifles on the market and extremely capable calibers that make it very easy for someone to take the skills they've got and push them further. So what I want to do in this video is talk about what are the necessary pieces of equipment to get into it. What's the fundamental gear? What's the fundamental skills? What does it take for you to go from shooting long range, whatever that currently is, to however far out you want to go? So for me, my goal when I moved out west was to shoot a mile. Growing up on the east coast, a thousand yard shot, that was pretty far. Very rare that I got to do that. So I always thought, man, it's really cool to get to shoot a thousand, but I'd love to stretch further. When I came out here to the West, I got the opportunity to do that about 18 months ago. So I'm into the extreme long range thing now for a while, long enough that I've got some experience in it that I'd like to share with you from a new shooter perspective, because it's not so much plug and play. It's not, let's buy a rifle. I got a place to shoot. Let's go do it. There's a lot more to that that I've found. It really requires you to step up your shooting game, step up your wind reading game, your reloading game, and there's definitely some pieces of equipment that you have to invest in to be effective at it. So in this video, I want to work through each of those pieces of equipment and talk about how to use them, why to use them, and does it make sense to upgrade or is that enough to get you by? So what I want to do in this is not so much just video shooting rounds downrange. There will be some of that. I'm going to try to splice that in as I talk. But this is a little bit more of a review or a gear review. So I'm going to bring up a concept and then I'll try to splice in video footage where it makes sense. So, that said, the first place everybody wants to go when it comes to extreme long range is rifle and caliber. And we'll get there, but the first thing I want to ask is, what is extreme long range to you? So extreme long range, we can debate this all day. Is it 1,000 yards plus? Is it 1,500 yards plus? Is it a mile plus? I don't know. We're not going to answer that in this video, but I want to challenge you to think about how far are you currently shooting and how far do you want to go? And in my mind, that gap is extreme long range, maybe for you. So for me, I think of extreme long range at about 1500 yards plus. That's the distance where any inconsistencies in your loads and your shooting abilities and your targets, that's where it really starts to show up. And the further you push, the bigger that error gets. So when I'm saying extreme long range, I'm talking about 1500 yards and plus for myself. Okay, now that said, let's talk about the rifle. So in a lot of my videos, you've definitely seen me shooting this Barrett MRAD. Love this rifle. Prior to this, I had a Ruger Precision rifle in 300 PRC. That was my entry into extreme long range. Now, with the rifle, there's a couple things that come to mind. First is the caliber. So let's talk about caliber selection. Caliber selection is one that I believe is maybe one of the most debated things. And in my opinion, it's one of the most important items when you're going to start shooting extreme long range. So personally, I'm a huge fan of the 30 cal magnums. I love shooting 300 PRC. It's very effective. It's quite affordable. And it's not that punishing when it comes to recoil. But that said, there are a ton of other options out there. There's 338 Lapua, which I've also got a barrel for it. There's smaller caliber, seven millimeters. Some folks try to push the 6.5 Creedmoor further, but I'm not gonna tell you there's a caliber that's one size fits all. What I do wanna challenge you to do is think about what you're doing and make sure the caliber that you're looking at makes sense for you. So for myself, when I shoot extreme long range, I want a caliber that's got enough bullet and energy that when it hits, whatever it hits, downrange that it either splashes in the dirt or it splashes on the target where I can see it. So personally, I like the 300s because there's enough energy there that when it hits, you know where it hit and then you can correct. The other things to think about when you're choosing a caliber is the cost. So the 300 Magnums, you're shooting a bullet with extremely high BC, in my case, a 230A tip, for just shy of a dollar a round. You bump up to a bigger bullet, sure, maybe you get a little bit more performance, but your cost and your recoil increases substantially. So is the trade-off there? If your goal is to shoot a mile, do you need to go bigger? For me personally, I don't believe so. So when it comes to caliber, my choice is one of the 300 Magnums. 
300 PRC. I want to try a 300 normal one day. That thing's getting a ton of attention right now. So 300 Magnums for me is a great place to start. They're not that punishing on recoil. Depending on the caliber, you can find factory loadings. And they're very flat shooting. So if you look at this 300 PRC, if you check out my video where I did 300 PRC versus 338 Lapua Magnum, you'll see the 300 PRC was actually a little bit flatter shooting and a little bit better in the wind. So you're shooting a high BC bullet very fast. That's the next piece I want to talk about when it comes to caliber. So when you think about caliber, what bullet are you choosing? So in the case of like a 338 Lapua Magnum, everybody wants to go to the heavies. You get the really high BCs, the 300 game projectile, that's got to be awesome, right? I'm not sure I'm sold on that. Same thing with the 250 A tip and something like this 300 PRC. There's a trade off between BC, weight, and velocity. Oh. I pulled that fifth shot a little bit high. The first four rounds were totally in the black, single hull. Velocity were an average of 29, 26, SD of five, and an extreme spread of. 11 across five rounds and in my opinion you want enough velocity for myself i target 2800 feet per second and higher i want to see at least 2800 feet per second with a high bc bullet to be happy so that's the other piece when you're choosing a caliber what bullet and what velocity because velocity is huge velocity is what gets you out to the target the other piece of that is your twist rate so in the 300 prc i'm shooting a one and eight twist i'm really happy with that it seems to perform very well and it gives me the flexibility to shoot really any weight bullet that I want to, it'll stabilize really any of them. It does really, really well with the 230s. The next piece of the rifle is you've got your caliber selected, but now you've got to make sure your velocity is extremely consistent. So this is where I've got some footage that I'll cut in here in just a little while, but your velocity extreme spread and your velocity SD or standard deviation are critical when you get out to extreme distances. Any variation in that will show up as an elevation shift that you can't control for. It's an unknown variable. You can't control for it. So that's where extreme long range, if you want to get into it, you've also got to step up your hand loading. Now currently, I'm not there yet. I'm not exactly happy with the loads that I have for this rifle. They're good enough that I'm able to make hits, but they could definitely be better. So when I'm talking SDs and extreme spreads, what are my targets? So for myself currently, I target less than 10 on the SD and less than 25 on the extreme spread. Now that's not great. There are many people out there that are doing way better than that, but that takes a lot of time, energy, and investment in the reloading room where if I can get those numbers, which I can do, and I can go out and shoot steel, I believe it's more valuable to shoot steel at distance with those numbers than to constantly be tweaking my load, chasing lower and lower extreme spreads and SDs. Now, the further you go, the more important those numbers become. So take that with a grain of salt because the trade-off is huge when you get further out. If you're going out to 2,500, 2,600 yards, which I want to get to, but currently I don't have the velocity capability to do that. My extreme spread and my SDs are just way too big. I'm getting a lot of elevation change in there that I can't control for. Now the piece of that that's important to note, and we'll talk about this in a little while, is your target. Target will play into this, but for myself, the tighter you can get with SDs and extreme spreads, the better. I target 10 on the SD, 25 on the extreme spread, and later on I'll show you some footage of what that actually looks like downrange. So that's the rifle and the caliber choice. Next piece is your optics and your mounts. So optics and mounts, this is where I believe it's crucial to spend money. I want to invest in optics because if I can't see the target, I can't shoot it. If I can't see that splash off the target in a shadow, I can't correct. So put your money into an optic. That said, I would rather have a clear scope, clear glass, than higher magnification. So if you're going to pay $2,000 for an optic or $2,500, I'd rather put that into glass clarity than higher magnification. What you'll see is lower glass quality at higher magnification becomes milky. And even though you've got higher magnification, you can't actually use it. So put your money into glass clarity. The other important thing on a scope is repeatability. Make sure that it holds the zero. Make sure that it makes corrections that you call for in the dials if you're dialing. Personally, I've moved to something like a trimmer reticle. I believe that trimmer reticle is huge 
being able to mill targets out if you're going to measure them or correct for windage. We can debate reticles all day, whatever you're happy with, so long as it gives you the ability to make corrections primarily for windage. It has enough internal elevation for you to dial out far enough that you're going to be shooting, and it's got clear glass. That's crucial. Mounts, these are really important. So you think about how far you want to shoot, make sure you've got a mount that gives your scope the ability to dial out to however far you're going. So for me, we've got footage of this that I'm going to roll in a little while. I run out of elevation on this package at about 27 mils. That 27 mils puts me in the ballpark at 2,300 yards before I have to start holding over in the reticle or just shy of that. So I can dial in my scope all the way out to just shy of 2,300 and hold on the elevation line. Beyond that is where I have to start holding over. You got scope mounts that have 20, 30 MOA. You've got rails. This MRAD has something like 10 mils of elevation built in. So I've already got it built in. So I run a scope mount with zero MOA elevation built into it. These are all things to think about. How far are you going to shoot? How much internal adjustment do you have? And then get your scope mount to make sure you can maximize your scope. The next piece of the rifle is accuracy. So definitely spend your time and energy in the reloading room trying to chase that velocity, but accuracy, it's gotta be able to shoot. And for myself, I'm happy if it's under one MOA. Now, that might sound like a lot to a lot of you, but we're not all perfect shooters every day. We're always gonna have error, and if I can con consistently shoot a rifle, one MOA or less, I'm happy, ideally 0.75. Now, I'm sure everyone on, on my videos here in the audience, you're probably a way better shooter than that, which is awesome. But for myself, I've been very effective being able to consistently shoot one MOA groups at 100 yards, and then that translates out further. Okay, so that said, let's take a look at 100 yards. I took this Baird MRAD out the other day, and I fired a couple rounds at 100 yards, and I want you to take a look. So check out my 100 yard group, and check out my 100 yard velocity and we'll use that as a baseline when we start to stretch further. So what I do at 100 yards is confirm my zero and check my speed, check my groups. So I've got five rounds of 230 A-tips loaded up. We're at 100 yards. I've got one little dot out there. Let's put the five rounds on paper with the chronograph and see what we get for a speed as well as a group and a zero. So if this runs long, I'm going to edit the time between the shots. So if you notice that, it's in the effort to cut the video down and not make it crazy long with me shooting 100 yard groups. So here we go. All right, so I put a group down there. It's a little bit bigger than I'd like. It's definitely under an inch. Velocity, we're running an average of 2871. I've got an SD of 9.4. And I've got an extreme spread of 25. I'll walk you down and show you the group, but I'd call it good enough that we're gonna stretch it out tonight. All right, walking up to my 100 yard target that I just shot. I wanted to give you a look at the group. So these are the five rounds of the 238 tip. Not the world's greatest group, but it'll get the job done. If we take the tape measure and put on that. That's right at, right at an inch, just a hair under an inch, center to center. It'll get the job done. I remember when I was firing, the one that flew high right here, this is my third round. I'm not sure I had the most comfortable shooting position on that one, but either way, it doesn't matter. I'll show you what this looks like when we stretch it out on steel. I also, in my dope, may take a tenth off just to bump that down a little bit, but let's move out to steel and see what this looks like at distance. So as you can see in that 100-yard footage, I was able to achieve a 1 MOA group, and I had an SD in the single digits, which I'm happy with, and I had an extreme spread under 25, again, which I'm happy with. Is it perfect? No. Is it good enough for me to shoot to distance? Yes. 
And if you're new to the game, I would encourage you to take what you've got and go shoot it. Now, certainly I want to improve those numbers and that's something I'm working on currently, but we're all here to shoot steel. So a little bit later on, we're going to take that rifle with that exact load and we're going to stretch it out and I'll show you what that looks like. Now, if you've made it this far, I'm super impressed and I really appreciate it. Now, what I wanted to do here was create a video that gives you a look at what it takes to get started in extreme long range. However, I realized in filming this, there was way more content that I wanted to try to cram into one video. So we're going to split this up into a three part series. So we're going to conclude part one here with what you've already seen. And then shortly we'll move into a part two, which is going to look at supporting gear. And then a part three, which is going to wrap it all together and give you a look at how this package and how the supporting gear that I'm using stacks up for long range performance. So kind of a summary of if you're trying to get into this, if you follow the path that I'm showing you here, what can you expect? Now, if you like the sounds of that, go ahead and hit the subscribe button because I'd love for you to join me on this journey. Also, I'm trying to grow this channel into something cool and it's your interaction that helps me do that. So if you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up on the like there. Also comment, I'd love to hear where are you at on your long range journey? Are you trying to get into extreme long range? Is there any questions that you've got? Any of the gear that I looked at here that you'd like a further in depth review on? Let me know. And then finally, hit me up on the Instagram page at Mountains Mullets America. It's a great place for me to give you a look at what's coming, but also I really enjoy the private messages there. I've had a lot of really good conversations with several of you that have had video ideas or questions and other things that we are able to talk about through private messages. So hit me up there on Instagram if you enjoyed this. I can't wait for you to stick around and join me in part two and three because I think it's going to be a pretty cool journey. Thank you.